zero at one two knots cleared for takeoff. Crew has to read that back, right. and you're good to go. Pilot, release the parking brake. All right. And and on the thrust levers, you go up the first click and then the second click. First click, second click, second click. And actually, I didn't set a flex stem, so go all the way up. Go all the way up. Yep. So everybody feel the motion, so you feel that you're pushed into the seat. Alright, we got 120. Yep, see the little numbers on there? So V1, rotate. Positive rate, that's gear up. Gear up. Perfect. Pull out a little bit, and then up. And that's the gear up. Now you can pitch into the flight directors. Flight director is giving you pitch and lateral guidance. Right now, we're just on a heading, so it's just telling you to go straight on a heading. All right. And it's telling you what pitch to fly. Now it says, okay, we've reached the point that we can reduce thrust from takeoff. Okay. So you can pull it back. CL. Two clicks. Three, yeah. So the climb to ten. One more. One more. There you go. Got it. Now the odd thing in the Airbus over a Boeing product is that the Boeing and thrust levers move. Of course, they call them throttles. We say, ah, boats have throttles, right? Yeah. Real jets have <laughs> thrust levers. So in the Airbus, we have thrust levers, and now the thrust levers don't move anymore. And the auto thrust system is doing what it's supposed to do. Notice there's a little S on the speed tape down there. Yep. That says we've exceeded the minimum speed at which we can reduce the slats to zero. Those are the slats. I'll squeeze the handle and push them up. And you'll notice that they're retracting. So those are the leading and trailing edge devices are retracting into the wing so we can accelerate. And we don't need to go any higher than that. So let's go down to something like that. It's going to say level off. And now you can see downtown New York City. Piece of cake, right? <laughs> You're an airline pilot. <laughs> and there you can hear the, the uh, auto thrust. Yeah, so it's actually not going to let me exceed any kind of speed. No, so what it's doing right now is it's saying you're asking for 250 knots, so I'm going to adjust the thrust uh -huh. to maintain 250 knots. Okay. And there you go. And so now it's leveled you off at whatever, 4,000 feet. And. 250 knots. Sweet. And away you go. Now, if you wanted to get, say, a better view of downtown New York City, pitch over. So push forward. Okay, so now what do you see in front of you? Besides the city getting bigger, see, notice the flight director was telling you, hey, yeah. you're not going where you should be going. Go up. We get an altitude alerter that says, hey, you're off your altitude. We see that even at idle thrust, if you pitch down enough, the airplane will keep accelerating because yeah. it's a slick airplane and a heavy airplane and it can only do so much. So now you're accelerating. You can feel free to bank left or right, keep some of the city if you want. And now you can also see the flight director saying, hey, you're not doing what I'm telling you to do, pay attention. Yeah. But, of course, we're intentionally doing that. But. <laughs> Now you're pitching up, so now the auto, or the auto thrust system came in and said, oh wait a minute, we're slowing down, and you heard and felt the thrust come in. Uh, and so now the thrust is kicking back in to get you back to your speed, which you had dropped below. Things thinking, what the hell is this guy doing? What are you doing, <laughs> right? Now, if we were a crew taken off out of Kennedy, keep flying, I'm just going to reach around for All right. You'd have your iPad with your jets on it, and you could see, oh, there I am. There's the airspace. So if I have airspace restrictions that I'm concerned about, for example, flying below Class Bravo airspace, there's a 200 knot speed restriction. So you've got a visual representation of where you are. And we can reproduce that in the simulator. See LaGuardia over there? Yep. 
Now this sim's made by, yeah, it's right off the right wing. This sim's made by CAE. So there's a, right, there's a stadium right next to LaGuardia. And I'm not a New Yorker, so I never remember the name of it, but there's a stadium there. Okay. And CAE City. went in and put a billboard on it that says CAE. A city field, I think. Yeah, there you go, city yeah. field. So if you go low enough and close enough, you can read the CAE billboard. There's a Yankee Stadium. Yeah. Hmm. Now, the next generation of visuals we're going to get, they're taking gaming computer uh, visual generators. And this is all going to look like tenfold more realistic. Oh right now, it's crazy pretty cool. And you still see three dimensional buildings and stuff, but that's kind of, that's very um, labor intensive because they have to build those kind of. Yeah. This is going to automatically, you'll look down and every single thing you see will have that three dimensional size to it. They said if you're on approach and you get close, like in, in New York, you get kind of the one, especially on one three left, you come down and you do this dog leg turn over top of a hotel out there. They said it, the visuals are so good you can see the uh, the air conditioners on the roof and stuff oh my God. on the new visual system. That's I saw crazy. them up in Montreal last summer. Mm. They're pretty neat. Mm -hmm. Now, for our perspective, it's like, ooh, that's cool, but does that really enhance my training? Because I don't really care. If I was training in a helicopter, it probably would be different. But, um, so one of the committees I'm on, the pilots have raised the issue of how well or poorly designed the EFPs are. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that? So, so, so they're asking the question, should the FAA and the avionics developer be more concerned with how easily it is to navigate through information? So than I think it's a great, it, it's, so it's that twofold question. It's, can I make it better? Yeah. How much does it cost? Can the airline afford to do it? Our newest aircraft now have the ability, like what this is actually using is the GPS signal. And in the simulation, I'm faking the signal to match to our position. Our aircraft, our newest aircraft, have the ability to actually connect that to the aircraft GPS. So I'm getting actual navigatable data mm -hmm. up here. Mm -hmm. This is cool stuff, but it's not really navigatable because I'm not using an approved FAA source. I'm using right. an iPad GPS, right? right? So that's one of the options. Mm -hmm. Some of the new cool airplanes, like the Airbus 350, or the, I'm sure the newest Boeings are the same thing. They have fancier stuff. They have checklists built in. They have these kinds of systems that integrate with the aircraft. Right. And those are great. Um, I think it, you know, my personal opinion would be it's going to have to be one of those. As we continue to improve, we keep looking at how do we make it so we don't price, uh, you know, spirit out of business. You know, <laughs> us out of business. Uh -huh. We're losing money. If you told me tomorrow I got to go spend $20 million on upgrading those, we're like, well, wait a minute, we're losing money. How do I spend $20 million on that? Yep. So, you know, maybe a United or a Delta or a, somebody can carry that cost, but not everybody can. Mm -hmm. So I think it's that balancing, you know, and we've done that forever, right? When ground prox warning came in, everybody's like, oh my God, it's so expensive. Yeah, but how many lives have we saved over the course of time? Mm -hmm. But we do have to bring it in at a rate that everybody can absorb the cost of it. Uh -huh. um, for sure, I mean, I think JetBlue does a pretty good job. This is the Jefferson product, which is kind of the industry standard. Um, and it's, they bought out their competitor and then stole all their technology and it's way better since they did that. Um, the so other guys- Four Flight? Yeah. They bought it. Once they bought out Four Flight, this stuff in, in, like got 20 times better. And I can show you when we're not in here, I can show you some of the cool stuff on here. But, um, so what else? Um, let's do a, how about point me that way and pitch down? It's way down. Way down? Yeah. All right. So we're going to look at two things here. Now, if you guys, whatever questions you guys have, I know this was, there's a lot of ATC uh, stuff. We had originally talked about, like, showing you how vectors and things work, but um, that was kind of thinking that it was actual controllers. So seeing that you guys aren't exactly actual controllers is probably more talking about. Next it. group will be. Yeah, okay. They, yeah, they're, they're command so center and everything. Okay. I want you to try to hit the Statue of Liberty. So. And I'll have visual proof if you hit yes. it. Yes. <laughs> if you're not looking up at the you torch, you didn't get low enough. enough. So there's our ground, our, our um, radar rate. altimeter. Sync Telling rate. us how high we are, and now the airplane is saying, hey, your sync rate compared to the ground is not good. No. And in a minute, sync it's going to start screaming. Up. 
So now Hold it says up. you're really in a bad shape. Hold Unless up. Unless I say I'm tired Hold of listening, up. turn the system off. So I disabled all the automated stuff, guys. Don't think that. It also says you're so close to the ground, you must be landing. Put the gear down. So those are all the warnings we're getting. There you go. Wings level. Keep pitching down. You're not low enough yet. There you go. And there's a statue. <laughs> Good. Now, put us on the floor. Full back stick. All the way back. Pull it back hard. Level the wings. This is an example of the automated keep pulling. Pull hard. Come on. Pull it all the way back. This is what I was talking about. So I'm standing straight up, real life, but it looks like I'm leaning forward. Oh, wow. Right? And notice the airplane said two things. One is you're going to a bad place, so I stopped your pitching at 30 degrees. Oh, I see that. And Alpha Floor says, I don't care what you want, I'm giving you max power. Mm -hmm. Because you drove me into a really bad airspeed place. And now it says if you hold full backstick, I'm still not going to let you do that. And I'm going to start pitching you down because you're doing something really unsafe. Uh, so that this is. It does. Control Correct, but the newer Boeing's all fly by wire protection is the same as we do. Okay. Yeah, so um, it's, it's bringing me down. Yeah, see, so now you're holding full back stick, and it still says, I'm giving you max thrust, and I'm lowering the pitch so that you don't go too low. Notice the speed tape has a solid red. The top of that red is where the wing stalls. You guys know what a wing stall is? <laughs> where it stops flying? Okay, so what if you said, ah, the heck with you, I'm smarter than you are. I'm going to get rid of the thrust altogether. Notice the airplane is saying, no matter how much back pressure you hold, I'm going to pitch over and keep you from killing everybody. And what it's going to do is it's going to stop at what we call alpha max, so the maximum angle of attack of the wing, and it will end up holding us right there at that red bar. So it's like you're starting to feel buffet because you're close to stall speed, and we're descending. And it's just going to sit there, and it'll, it'll play glider at that maximum angle of attack. Well, you pretend to be Air France. Yes. So like the Air France crash, mm -hmm. the automation switched them to the ultimate loss, so the yeah, it was no longer had that protection, I believe. They had gotten into some really weird places. So they had gotten, in, first of all, they flew into weather, yep. right? Because they flew into weather and had the icing problems, then they got slow. So now they've got this angle of attack that keeps increasing. So now the actual aircraft is doing this, right? It's mm -hmm. going down and down and down. And now their angle of attack is up like this, and they're actually almost flat, and they're falling. But the airplane is going, whoa, you're so slow, you must not be flying. There's no way you could be flying with this. So it misinterprets that as you're on the ground.